a changed man, and his book is Papa John. It is a devastating chronicle of a fight to overcome drug addiction, and that's an addiction that controlled his life, his entire family, as a matter of fact, and he's here today to share his story. And, uh, John, the powerful uh, degree to which you were addicted to drugs is something I think that people don't understand how far it actually got back in the 1970s. Where was the bottom? Uh, I, I guess uh, the bottom uh, was when I realized I had no more control over it, that uh, I tried to uh, go through withdrawal myself, you know, uh, without professional help. I always tell yourself you can do that. And you, and you think you can, uh, and uh, uh, I found that uh, I needed, really needed a therapeutic situation where I could think, get into, and uh, we set up a lockdown for a while. And by the time I was finally uh, arrested and, uh, uh, and brought back to Earth again, I was more like this sort of a wild animal rampaging through the New York area. Than You're living from next hit to next hit to next Absolutely, hit. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Uh, this is the thing that I think a lot of people who had no experience with drugs don't understand. Here's a guy who's got everything. I mean, you've got it all. You've got money, you've got fame, you've got the music that you love to do, you've got a chance to do films, and you blow it up. What? Why? Well, uh, I don't know. It, it's, uh, maybe people you don't deserve it in the first place, you know? And it's all sort of transitory, and it's, it's been a problem for uh, creative people, you know, down, well, I guess from uh, Tom Coleridge or Kubla Khan, doing opium, it's been like a, but it's, 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 it's a problem that just, you know, it's very pervasive on all areas of society, and uh, drugs are sort of a, an a equal opportunity employer, and <laughs> they'll take anyone they want, you know, that gives them a chance. First time you kicked it, family kicked it, and you get into alcohol. Yeah. Now it's two years completely clean. Mm -hmm. How do you know that this is it? I'm, no. Oh, oh gosh, I'm frightened to death. You know, I just got on probation 48 hours ago. I've been on federal probation for the last five years. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> and uh, it's really it's a continuing battle of uh, like restructuring your life and uh, trying to keep uh, your friendships straight and where you hang out and uh, what you do with your life and your free time. Let's talk to a couple of other folks who've been waging that same kind of battle. Jennifer McNeil is with us and Patrick McGrory. They're with Daytop Village. You've had your own kinds of problems. Uh, and two years, you've had no, no drugs whatsoever, Patrick. 16 months, I think, for you, Jennifer. Right. When you hear this story, here's a guy who's been through it a little longer than you have. What kinds of things can you learn from him? What would you like to ask him? Well, I was, uh, we were talking before, and I had asked him a question if his drug usage had anything to do with his career. Because I was, I'm looking into a career of being an actress, and uh, I was wondering if anything, if your drug usage had anything to do with your career. Well, I think, yeah, certain, certain careers do, uh, put you more in contact with people who are using drugs all the time. Uh, but I know a lot of people who are great musicians and uh, uh, artists, songwriters, painters, sculptors, uh, actresses, actors, uh, who went through the whole thing, you know, and never had any problems at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that that is really uh, the real problem. So do you, do you have any idea why you got high? I think there's as many reasons for people getting high as there are people. I mean, right. you know, I, I guess, you know, from, you know, being a daytime, but uh, you find that everyone has a different reason for, you know, for what really happened to them. It's not, you know, like one thing that, 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 that takes you away. Right, I know that. Patrick? Uh, yeah, I know, John. I can really identify with you on that fear that, that you have right now. I mean, uh, after you've been clean for a couple of years, you have so much invested, and you know all the hard work that really goes into staying clean. And then I know I sometimes think back, I say, boy, I overdosed, I died, I ran the streets, I could have gotten killed at any time. But do you still uh, wake up in the morning and say, it's there, it's back there, I, I'd like to have it and I gotta fight it? I have to fight it every morning, that's what I'm saying. And how do you deal with that fear that, that you say you still have? Uh, I know you still have. Uh, well, I think the one thing we gotta make clear to, to all the people, and uh, the three of us know very, very well, is that, uh, Physical detoxification from drugs, physical withdrawal, you know, only takes a few days, two weeks at most, you know, and, and you know, you're through with it. It's the psychological uh, addiction and the dreams that come for years afterwards, like drug dreams you actually have in the middle of the night, or, or the way the light hits a room, or an aroma, or a sound, or a song, or something like that. But all of a sudden, you have a flashback and you're back in there again. It's really hard to fight your way out. Uh, we've got just a few seconds left. There is that point, and it's an important point, where you're still denying that, that you need some help. Now, how do you get past that where, where if you're involved in a problem, as somebody may be, they're going to reach to the phone or they're going to do whatever's necessary to well, get Well, they can listen to the three of us as we talked about this just a moment ago. But uh, 
No, uh, none of us would be here if we hadn't actually ended up in professional health. You just can't do it by yourself. It's just uh, one of those things where you really have have to be locked down for a while and and give your you know open your ears. Is life a whole lot better now? Yeah. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> life is real now. It's it, not a haze, a drug-induced haze. It's very real and it's much more enjoyable you seem to smell smells that you never smelled before and enjoy relationships with people the little things that it's, before it, it, it's hard to get back to the fact of being a human being again you know we give a lot of drug talks with people around the country uh mackenzie my daughter and i do now and uh we're doing one in uh, fort worth as a matter of fact uh the fort worth uh, psychiatric institute on the 22nd and we talked to kids in las vegas last week and it's it's just that it gets bigger and bigger, the problem all the time. John Phillips and Jennifer McNeil and Patrick McGroy, I know it's tough things to talk about, but you help people. Thanks a lot. Thanks.